Zazen. Boom, boom. Good God, y'all. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Hello, wonderful person. It's Brad here for uh, uh, What the Zen. <laughs> Maybe I should call it that. So, I would like to talk today about a famous phrase from my teacher's teacher, Kodo Sawaki, who said, Zazen is good for nothing. Now, this is a funny thing to say especially from somebody like Kodo Sawaki who started doing Zazen when he was an adolescent and continued for the rest of his life into his 80s uh, teaching uh, Zazen and, and uh, doing sashins. He was very famous for bringing Zazen back into Japanese life. It had been kind of gone for a long time. The full quotation as it is usually given is, what is Zazen good for? good for nothing. As long as this good for nothing practice does not penetrate to our bones and we really practice what is good for nothing, it won't be good for anything. And an interesting little aside I found out when I was doing a little bit of research for this video is that Shohaku Okumura is apparently the guy who is responsible for translating whatever Ko uh, Koto Sawaki said in Japanese, which I don't know what it was, into Zazen is good for nothing. And the story goes that he, Shohaku Okumura, when he first moved to the United States, got a job uh, picking blueberries. And among the blueberries were these other berries called dog berries, and the supervisor there uh, kept seeing people mistakenly pick the dog berries, which are apparently inedible, uh, instead of the blueberries, and he would yell at them, stop picking those good-for-nothing dog berries! So that phrase stuck in Okumura's mind for a long time, and when he translated Kodo Sawaki's statement, he translated it as good for nothing. And it's a good phrase. I, I think it's one that's really important. But the thing is, okay, I am here saying, sitting here saying, Zazen is good for nothing, but I've been doing it for 35 years, at least. 36, 37 years, I'm not sure. Most of my life. If it was really absolutely useless, then I would have given it up a long time ago. In fact, it was because Zazen was useful that I kept on doing it. I, when I, I always hear these stories from people who, when they get into Zazen, they immediately run off to a monastery and practice for, you know, Ango's practice periods over, you know, seven or eight years of practice periods or something. That wasn't me. I ran into a teacher who I've talked about a lot, Tim McCarthy, and I was really impressed by him and really impressed by what he taught. But I was a little skeptical about the Zazen thing because religions, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not big into religion. I mean, I'm really interested in religion now. But, it, and even when I was younger, I was really interested in it, but interested in it as an academic subject or a subject to study. But converting to one, uh, you know, because religious people seem weird. So what would happen to me is I would sit Zazen for a few months. This is when I first started out in my late teens, early 20s. And because I wasn't, you know, of the mindset like, I'm into Zen, I would do it for a while, and then after a while I would kind of slack off and I'd stop. And what always happened was that I would, my mind, the fizziness, the difficulties, the stuff that would go on in my mind would just start to rise and rise and rise, and I would have a worse and worse time of life, you know. And after a while I would kind of take stock of my life and go, well, what's different? And I'd be like, am I drinking too much coffee? Am I sleeping late? I don't know. And I realized the thing that was missing was Zazen and I would go back to it. And this happened several times. So it was the absence of Zazen that showed me what Zazen was good for rather than any sort of immediate, um, you know, kind of flashy thing that was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Uh, it was when I stopped that I realized that was the thing that was helping me out. And it wasn't until a while later, until I'd been doing the practice for a decade or more, that anything you know, mystical or anything like that started to happen for me. So it was hard to keep going at first. Now we can contrast Kodo Sawaki's statement about Zazen being good for nothing with what Dogen, who was, of course, one of Kodo Sawaki's heroes, says about Zazen. He says, Dogen says, when even for a moment you express the Buddha's seal by sitting upright in samadhi, which is just his fancy way of saying doing zazen, 
the whole phenomenal world and the entire sky turns into enlightenment. Furthermore, all beings at once obtain pure body and mind, realize the state of great emancipation, and manifest the original face. At this time, all things realize correct awakening, and you turn the Dharma wheel and expound profound wisdom, which is ultimate and unconditioned. So that sounds like Dogen got something out of Zazen, doesn't it? The thing to remember is the second part of Kodo Sawaki's quotation, which is, good for nothing. As long as this good-for-nothing practice does not penetrate to our bones and we really practice what is good for nothing, it won't be good for anything. To me, that's the key. So, on the one hand, Zazen is obviously good for something. You know, like I said, I got some benefit out of the practice. Dogen obviously got some benefit out of the practice. You get benefits out of doing Zazen practice. There's no doubt about that you know, a, a more even sort of temper and and uh, ease of dealing with life. That's what I got out of it. And, and eventually certain sort of mystical kind of experiences as well can come out of the practice. But the approach you need in order to do Zazen is to throw away any idea that anything is going to change. The, the problem is having goals. And we go through our lives There it is again. There's a ghost behind me. Sorry, but there was a ghost passing behind me, so I wanted to deal with that. Anyway, the problem is we go through our entire lives doing one thing to get to the next thing. So you go to kindergarten to get to first grade, you go to first grade to get to second grade, you go to elementary school to get to junior high school, you go to junior high school to get to high school, you go to high school to go to college, you go to college to get a job, you get a job to make money, you make money to have a weekend out, you have your weekend out to relax from making money. Everything is for something else. What we're trying to establish in Zazen is a practice that is only for itself, which has nothing to do with any sort of future achievement you want to get out of it, which is just sitting directly and completely in and of itself. That's why you throw away all your goals. Now, sometimes people in the comments section of these videos will want me to prove what Zazen will do for them, as if that's something that I have any interest in doing. I don't really. I, I, I honestly don't. I don't care if you, if you buy it or not. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me whether you believe in Zazen or not. I happen to find it to be a very useful thing and something I'd like more people to do, okay? So I do have that in mind. But on the other hand, there's no point in trying to sell it or no point in trying to convince people to do it. You, you either want to do it or you don't want to do it, and that's up to you. One of the other problems with this idea of Zazen being good for something or being something to achieve something from is who achieves it. And I found this nice little quote from Shohaku Okumura, who I mentioned earlier in the video, that sort of gets to this. Uh, he says... One part of Kyoju Kaimon, which reflects Dogen's teaching about the precepts, discusses the three treasures. Dogen first says about the absolute three treasures, the unsurpassable true awakening is the Buddha treasure. This unsurpassable true awakening is Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, reality itself. Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi is an old Sanskrit phrase. There is no such thing that awakened to what is this reality. Within reality, there is no observer, no person who sees the truth. Because everything is inside, because everything is a part of the network of interdependent origination, there is no observer, nothing outside the network. So there is no one who awakens to reality. When we say unsurpassable true awakening, reality itself is awakening. No one and nothing is deluded, nothing has illusion. One of the knots, one of us, has illusion or delusion or delusive perceptions, and we all have it. But that kind of illusion is part of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, enlightenment. Everything is included, nothing is excluded. 
So the problem with having a goal for your zazen is it, it's something to be acquired by you, and you are a fiction that you have created. Uh, there isn't anyone to get enlightened. So there you go. That's my little message for today. Zazen is good for nothing, and you're never going to get enlightened because there is no you. If you want to send me, you and me, a donation, you can send it to the link that I'm showing you below, or if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see direct links to my Patreon and PayPal pages. That is how I make my living. That is how I keep going and buy cereal and toilet paper, as I said last time. Thank you very much to those of you who keep on donating, and if you're financially having trouble, these days. Don't worry about me. Don't send me a donation. I'll be okay. But for those of you who keep sending me donations, that is a great thing and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye.